Mayor Harold Washington is in the middle, depending upon whom you ask, of his term in office or of his first term in office. How does the man who occupies the top desk react to that? We're going to ask him next on Dimensions. Good morning. I'm Joan McGrath. Ordinarily, I spend this opening moment of our show outlining the issues involved and giving an elaborate introduction of my guest. Well, neither is necessary today. At issue is the city of Chicago, and my guest simply needs no introduction. He is the Honorable Harold Washington, mayor of the city of Chicago. I'm delighted to have you here. Thank you for being my guest today. It's a pleasure, Joan. I'm delighted to be here. Are you having fun yet? Are you enjoying this office of mayor with all the fisticuffs and confrontations that are involved? I haven't seen the fisticuffs. The confrontation is part of life. It's certainly part of politics. And it's certainly part of the career I bargained for. I'm ecstatic. I'm in seventh heaven. Uh, not only am I doing something I like, I anticipated it. I anticipated the severity of it, uh, the difficulty of it. I enjoy it. I sincerely and deeply feel we've made tremendous progress. I think there's more to come. And so those who concern themselves about my the level of ecstasy, suffice to say, it's extremely high. You say you anticipated it. You're a lifelong Democrat. You've served in Washington. You had visibility in the community. There are other mayors who are black in this country who have had far less friction. Name How is one. it that you Name anticipated one. it? Name one who's had far less friction. I think they've all had relatively rough times, except perhaps uh, Mr. Bradley in California. Maybe one of others, but if you trace the history and go to each of the cities where you've had black mayors arising, and perhaps if you go back even further and look at other major cities where you've had transitions from one ethnic group to another, I think you'll find a pattern of friction. And when you superimpose on that, uh, the new boy on the block bringing in a different system, then you've had serious controversy over the years. So it's nothing new. We're here in Chicago, so it looks monumentally different, but it's not. It appears to be different from others outside Chicago because Chicago is such a controlled city, such a depressed city, uh, such a monolithic city, such a singularly and ruthlessly ruled city that people felt uh, it would never change. And so anything short of total quiescence, which we had under previous administration, looks like a big cyclone. Define depressed. Why are we a depressed city? depressed in the sense that we were beaten down. Our, 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 our potentialities were not realized because the system didn't permit it. Uh, a good example, uh, for years and years and years prior to my coming into office, women never had a significant role to play in this government, none whatsoever. You couldn't find them. With the obvious exception of your predecessor. Uh, she, well, she was at the top of the heap, but there were no women below her. Uh, we, people are shocked when I say this, that we have put more women in significant, powerful decision-making positions than all mayors over the past 50 years. And even the previous mayor didn't bring women into office. We did that. We opened it up. Uh, Hispanics had no role to play in government. Blacks had a very small role to play. And so the city was depressed in the sense that a lot of talent just couldn't rise to the surface. Uh, and you can go on and on and on. The system of how you take care of certain constituent groups has radically changed. Uh, there was emphasis upon the big builder and the big booster and certain affluent neighborhoods which got all the largesse and others got none. We balanced that out and yeah, we were depressed, beaten down and, and, and ruled very, very rigorously. Let me jump on something you just said about the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. Are the opportunities available in Harold Washington's administration oh, for Hispanics? Manifest. I think they're quite obvious. Not only in terms of philosophy which says that we must continue to fight to make certain that Hispanics uh, adequately represented in the council as we are doing against the opposition of the 29, but in terms of uh, projects undertaken, for example, uh, concerning ourselves about uh, Hispanic neighborhoods, Hispanic representation. Uh, for example, we have a Hispanic council for the first time in the history of the city. Hispanics in con conspicuous positions, president of the school board, president of the board of health, heading up the mayor's office of employment and training, first and second deputies in many, many positions, uh, chief liaison in my own office. These positions were never available to Hispanics, never available to women seldom if ever available to blacks in this city. We deal in perception. We who watch your administration and we who are part of the media. We deal in perceptions and it is the perception 
that the Latino community has been somewhat disenfranchised by Harold Washington despite the tremendous outpouring of support. And I say one of the problems with the city which I must deal with immediately is the jaundice eye of the media. I would assume that that would be one of the most vivid aspects of this administration. How can you overlook the president of the school board? How can you overlook uh, the president of the Board of Health? How can you overlook Ms. Maria Serda, who heads up the Mayor's Office of Employment and Training? How can you overlook Ben Reyes, who is one of my liaisons? How can you overlook the Hispanic Council, which is not only comprised of Hispanics, but also operated in terms of executive? How can you overlook the fact that we've increased the amount of dollars going into the Hispanic community from a meniscal 1% of, 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 of a community development block grant uh, funds to almost 10, 12 percent. Now, how can you overlook the fact that when we came into office, uh, Hispanics represented less than one percent of the decision-making positions and now have 11? It's just amazing that that could be. That could be. And then how could they overlook, for example, the fact that we have been in the forefront of the drive to make certain, one, that Hispanics had adequate representation in the city council? You and the media if have the, if been. The, if, the, if the media is, is on that kick, then we, we got a real problem in this city. You and the media have been somewhat at odds since you took office in May of 1983. Is it wise, was it prudent of you as a chief executive to exacerbate relations with the media? Would it not well, have been smarter to court the I people I have not been press? at odds with the media. It is always wise as a political leader to state your position clearly and let the chips fall where they may. And I would like to think that the media as an institution perhaps sees that there are some very, very obvious uh, exceptions. If you're saying to me that the chief executive of a city of three million with a budget of <laughs> 1.8 billion, one of the most powerful economic base cities in the world, a multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-linguistic city uh, should kowtow to any interest group. And then I say to you, uh, you missed the significance of this job. No, no I no, certainly no. wouldn't. No, say. I have a tremendous respect for the First Amendment. As a matter of fact, I consider myself one of the major defenders of it, but not a slave to it, and certainly not a slave to the recipients of it. There seemed to be a an allegation on your part, and please stop me if I'm wrong, that the white press the mainstream press, if you will, could never be responsive to the needs, aspirations, and political aims of the black community. I was present a couple of years ago at a TV Academy function. Do you remember the, the luncheon where yeah. you and, and Mr. Walter Jacobson of Channel 2 went at it in no uncertain terms? At that time, you said that the white press could not possibly report accurately on what was happening in a black administration. I didn't say anything of the sort. I said that the institution of the media was so structured that it could not respond to the needs of women, Hispanics, or blacks because the composition was, of it was such that it couldn't understand those elements. I didn't say anything about white. I said, for example, you found very few women, or blacks, or Hispanics in editorial boards very few, if any, in sales, practically none of these three elements in production, working reporters, a pittance, anchor men or women, very few. That's what I said. This is manifestly true. It had nothing to do with white and black. I was being the advocate f for a sensible, reasonable inculcation and incorporation of three elements into the vast institution called the media, not print, not electronic, but media. That was my position. Mr. Jacobson was irrelevant to the whole thing until he injected uh, himself into it by saying, give me proof. And I said, well, you're at the bottom of the barrel. I'm not even concerning myself with you. I'm concerning myself with a pattern in one of the major decision and perception forming institutions in this country called the media. That was my point. But it disturbs me that it was so totally warped even after only a short period of two years.